Susie, like I know Susie. Oh, 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 what a girl. There's none so classy as this fair lassie. Oh, oh, holy Moses, what a chassis. <clears throat> May I take your hand, Miss Darrell? Oh, oh, if you. you don't mind, Lieutenant Benson. Uh, Major. Yes, sir, Colonel. Watch your step, Miss Darrell. May I drive you home, Miss Darrell? I'll get you luggage, Miss Darrell. Richard! Excuse me, Colonel. Richard, Sue, so, darling. I've got a cab taking away at the gate. We can pick up your baggage there. Good. Oh, Richard. I'm sorry, but it's been such a long time. Well, how on earth did you know when I would arrive? Oh, I have ways of finding out. After all, I'm pretty well known in flying circles. But let's talk about you. Oh, well, that would take weeks. I've played in England and Italy and Africa. And you know, I was afraid that the boys wouldn't like a dramatic actress, but they seem to like it very much. Oh, why shouldn't they? Just looking at you is top-notch entertainment. Oh, you're a dear. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Anything more I can do for you? Yes. Marry me. Oh, well, don't you think we ought to know each other better? I mean, how long's it been? Five weeks? Seven, counting before you were away. But I know you, Susan. I knew you the first time I ever met you. Oh. Oh, you're regal and gracious and charming and patrician. Well, don't you think you ought to know a little bit more about me, my background, my... <laughs> my... Why? You love me and I love you. That's all that matters. Besides, what could there possibly be about you that I should know? Rudy. Don't be afraid of him, darling. He's perfectly harmless. <laughs> he seems harmless. Put them anywhere. Rudy, Rudy, aren't you ashamed of yourself growling at your new papa here? <laughs> what did you call him? Rudy. His real name is Rhode Island. I used to live off the coast with my uncle, so I named him after the state. Yes, he seems a little large for Rhode Island, doesn't he? Oh, well, he's staunch <laughs> and true and dependable. I always think of Rhode Island like that. Nancy! Nancy! Where on earth could that maid be? I suppose I should have wired her that I was coming. Well, how do you like my little hovel? I like it fine. It's exactly like you, Susan. Highly complicated and yet very simple. Soothing and disturbing. Exactly like you. Well, I'm glad you feel that way about me. Do you know, I read somewhere that uncertainty was the certain way to make marriage work. Oh, I'll make a note of that. How about some coffee? Thanks. I'll make it myself. Come on, make yourself at home. No, I already feel at home. Do you know, it's been half an hour since you proposed to me. Do you still love me? I'll love you forever and forever. Oh, did he frighten you, dear? No, not at all. We were just getting acquainted. 
Where'd we fell? Oh, Rudy, what a thing to do. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be. I, I just picked the picture up to... Uh, I guess he got excited about it. Well, of course, Roger taught Rody how to sit up and speak, so he always gets excited when anybody calls attention to Roger. Oh. Now, go out in the kitchen, Rody. Go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Roger? Yes. Didn't I tell you about him? No, I don't think you did. I mean, yes. I, I don't remember. Oh, but I thought I had. That's Roger Burton. He was my husband. And he was my producer. In fact, he still is. My producer, I mean. Uh oh. But doesn't that sort of make it... Oh, no, not at all. We're very close friends. That is, when we're on speaking terms. Oh, I see. Well, he has a very nice, very nice necktie on. But, oh, didn't I tell you I was married before? No, I don't think you did. That is, if you did, I didn't hear you. I'm... What I mean is, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. Is it, is it, is it real? Oh, certainly, certainly. Lots of people have been married before and then married again after they've been married before. Oh, Richard, you're a darling. <laughs> oh, nonsense. <laughs> nonsense. How did you expect me to act? Like a, like a jealous idiot? No, like the fine, intelligent person you are. Uh, certainly. You know, you know so little about me that it's embarrassing. I, I don't know where to begin. Well, begin at the beginning, if you must. Well, I was born in Providence, Rhode Island, and my parents were poor but proud. Oh, that sounds like the typical success story. And I suppose you had the usual big American family, too. Lots of sisters and probably a brother or two. No, no, I was the only child. Oh? Oh, uh, well, that's Bill Anthony. Uh, actor? No, right. Uh, I could start with him. Oh, no, no, no. I'd much prefer to hear about you when you were a little girl. After all, what possible interest could he... Well, what I mean is, uh, you weren't married to him, were you? I was and I wasn't. What? Huh? Well, you see, uh, he didn't believe in marriage, but I did, and... Oh, oh, the coffee! Say, darling, you have a lunch appointment. Why don't you go and get cleaned up while I get the coffee? The guest room's the first door on the right. <sighs> Susan! Mm-hmm. Who uh, is this? Oh, that's Mike Ward, the best friend a girl ever had. Oh, just a friend, huh? Yeah, that's right, though. Uh, I was engaged to him at one time. Oh, only engaged, huh? Yeah. You know, he's got a nice face. I like him. Yes, he, he's very nice. <laughs> How long do you think you'll last? Pretty soon you'll be in the gallery too, eh? Hello, sucker. Hello. John, Mr. Aiken. How do you do? Mr. and Mrs. Hall, Mr. Aiken. How do you do? Senator Hartwell. Senator. Pleasure. And, oh, Mr. Ward, Mr. Aiken. How do you do? Thank you. Uh, we have Mrs. Gormley here, Mrs. Yes. Hill. And let me see. Oh, Sir Charles and Lady Barr. Sir Mr. Charles, Aiken. I'm sure. How do you do? Lady Barr. And I do want you to meet the Tinkums. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. How, do you, Tinkum? how do you do? And, uh, oh, Mr. Anthony. Glad Mr. to know Aiken. you. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Right, um, I guess. And uh, Carrie Taylor, uh, Mr. Aiken. Mr. Aiken. And Madame Dumont. How, How do you do? do? And how do you do? And telephone for Mr. Aiken in the library. Oh, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I'll show you where it is. Excuse me, Humphrey. Surely. Phone's on the desk. Oh, sir. Well, don't go, Susan. Hello. Oh, hello, Withers. What? Are you sure? That's splendid. That's marvelous. What is it, darling? The president has just appointed me regional coordinator of the National Aeronautical Bureau of Reconversion. 
Oh, that's such wonderful. It's a great honor. Oh, just a minute, Withers. Do you realize what it means? No, not exactly. Well, it means I'll have to go to the coast right away. It'll take me 10 days to clear things up out there, and then I'll be permanently stationed in Washington. What do you think about living in Washington? Well, I think... Oh, I knew you would. Withers. Withers, how soon can you get me plane reservations? Two people. But, Richard, wait a minute. I... Midnight plane? We can be married at my mother's home in Pasadena. Oh, that's splendid, Withers. Thanks very much. I'll see you at the airport. Just think, the head of the NABR. Well, Richard, uh, couldn't we wait till you got back from the coast and then... You love me, don't you, Susan? Oh, of course, Richard. I need you, and if I leave you here, I'll... I'll... I... You can make it, can't you, Susan? Well, I guess... Oh, that's kind of splendid. Now, I'll tell you what you do. A... Well, you I sneak upstairs and start packing. And I'll sort of really? play host for you. Well, well yes. it's all right. Bourbon and ginger ale and scotch and plain water. Yes, sir. Oh, nice party, isn't it? Yeah, just ducky. I've seen the time when Susan really used to throw a party. But if you know it all, you probably... Well, hello. Hello. What were you about to say? Oh, nothing at all. Uh, how about a drink? Yes, I think I will. A small glass of port wine. Yes, sir. You sick? No, as a matter of fact, I feel fine. I see. You know, uh, I'm a little befuddled, so correct me if I'm wrong, but... Aren't you the guy Susan's gonna marry? Of course. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I understand that she was engaged to you at one time. Oh, she told you that, did she? Why, certainly. You know Susan as honest as the days are long. Yeah? Well, don't you agree? Oh, sure, oh, sure. Yes. Port wine. Mm hmm? Hmm? You're getting a swell gal, Aiken. Yeah, she's a very fine woman. Where are you gonna live? Probably in Washington. Oh, Washington. Oh, well. Boy, will she make that town sit up and take notice. <laughs> I can just see her leading a conga line of senators right down Pennsylvania Avenue. <clears throat> you conga? No, I don't. Your rumba? No. I'll bet you waltz. What's wrong with waltzing? Well, nothing, nothing at all. Susan waltzes beautifully. But uh, you probably know that. Bourbon Scott. Thank you. I'd hate to see anyone make Susan unhappy, Aiken. Yes, sir. I'd be awfully upset. You know, she's a gay, happy, fun-loving gal. Always laughing and always joking. And nobody ought to try changing her. I see what you mean. Excuse me. I uh, beg your pardon, but would you mind stepping into the library for a minute? No, of course not. A lot of silly, prattling people babbling their heads off. <laughs> I take it you don't like cocktail parties. I don't like any kind of a party, much less a cocktail party. Oh, well, I guess it's a great credit to Susan that you're here. I didn't come here to see Susan. I came to see you. Oh. I wanted to find out just what kind of a man you were. Oh, that's natural. Well, how do I measure up? Mm, not bad. Not good. At least you're not one of those hacha la di da party types. No, I'm not. You wouldn't like to see Susan married to that type, eh? <laughs> Susan wouldn't like it either. She's a sound, deep, understanding woman. I'm glad to hear you say that. You know, I've been looking for a girl like Susan for years. She's a perfect lady, a born aristocrat. Susan is a true revolutionary, a free thinker, a hater of all bourgeois conventionalities. You mean she's a communist? It has nothing to do with politics. I merely mean that she's progressive. You want some good advice? Never try to fit her life into a conventional pattern. Watch hand in hand with her toward a newer, braver world. Good luck, comrade. Where is she? Upstairs. Good evening, Mr. Oh, Roger. Good. No, Steve. Susan! Who do you think you are, anyway, barging in here without knocking? I knocked as I was coming in the door. Well, you get out of here this minute. Oh, no. Not till I find out what this is all about. Chick tells me you're planning on getting married and leaving town next week. Is that true? No. Oh, well, then everything's all right. I'm leaving tonight. Yeah, you... What? You heard me. Oh, no, you're not. You're staying right oh, here. Oh, I am, am I? Yes, you are. You listen. 
Listen, you can't do this to me, running out of me like this. Listen, Nancy, you're Roger, this is one time you're not going to interfere. I love this one, and I'm going away with him, oh, see? Oh, you're always loving somebody. You, you, you get out of here before I throw you up. Go on, get Who's out. Who's going to throw me out? Richard! Well, what do you want? Get out. Can't you see this is a private argument? Who is this dope? That's the man I'm going to marry, and you can't talk to him like that. Miss Darrell asked you to leave. And I asked you to leave. Don't you listen to him, dear. He's just a rude, now, stupid... Now, look here, Susan. We've got a contract. Miss Darrell asked you to leave. Well, why don't you eat your contract? I've already bought the play and contracted for the cast. Miss Darrell asked you to leave. Well, why don't you get Mona? She's just a tripe for you. No, I need a drawing card. She won't draw flies. Oh, yes, she will. She Mr. Burton, Miss Darrell asked you to leave. You're getting in a rut, aren't you? Don't you talk to him like that. He's a gentleman, and he's not used to your kind of insults. Listen, you can't come in here and do things like this. Oh, that's familiar. Oh. You get out. You get right, right out this right. minute. Go on. I'm sorry, dear. Forgive me. I'll, I'll be down in a moment. All right. Now, Mr. Burton. Boy, what a temper, huh? I beg your pardon? I suppose this is very embarrassing for you and I. Hope you'll forgive me. Well, after all. Well, you see, Susan and I are old friends. In fact, we were married for quite some time. But she loves a knockdown and drag out fight once in a while. Are you trying to infer that this sort of thing occurs often? Oh, no. Probably won't happen to you at all. Certainly it will not. But Susan is quite an outspoken woman. You've discovered that already, I suppose. No, I hadn't. Well, don't worry. Want some advice? No. No, thank you very well, much. Well, take it from the first, Mr. Susan Darrell. Always be on the lookout for the unexpected. Now, see here, Mr. Darrell. Mr. Yes. Burton, I mean. I don't think I care for these conflicting stories about Susan. What conflicting stories? You say she's unpredictable. Just now I met two other men. One of them talked about her as if she were some sort of intellectual cultist. The other one insinuated that she did nothing but dance and drink. Oh, that's Mike and that Anthony guy. What do they know about her? I'm inclined to think that no one knows anything. That's right. I'm the only one who knows the real Susan. And if I can be of any help, you no, know... No, no, thank you. Well, good luck, mister. I have a feeling you're going to need it. Longacre 50598. Come in. Oh, there they are, right there. Yes, sir. Oh, hello. Is Mr. Roger Burton there? Oh, that you, Mr. Burton? This is Richard Aiken. <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, when we were talking this afternoon, you remember, you said this afternoon that if you could ever be of any help to me. <laughs> yes, that's right. I think I'll take you up. Well, you see, I have a last-minute cancellation, and I find myself stuck for dinner, so I wanted to... That's fine. And, uh, one more thing. You know Mr. Ward and Mr. Anthony, don't you? I thought it might be a good idea if... <laughs> yes, that's right. A kind of a bachelor dinner to Susan. But I wonder which Susan. Gentlemen, I'm a little upset. The trouble is, I haven't time to study Susan. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell me all you know about her. I want to know where you failed so that I won't make the same mistake. So that's what was at the bottom of all this. You know, I had a hunch you were up to some kind of horseplay, Aiken. But I thought you were in love with Susan. I thought you respected her like the rest of us. I do. I do. Of course you do. Sit down, Mike. Mike's right. Oh, now, wait a minute, Anthony. You're not going to play the gallant. Who's playing the gallant? It's just that I resent anyone thinking that I'd sit here and blab my head off like an old woman. Please, let me explain. I want to marry Susan. I love her. I die for her. That's why I've chosen this course. Won't you sit down and hear me out? All right. But make it snappy, will you? I've got to run along home and rinse out a few little things. First, let me say I know all of you want to see Susan happy. Now, each of you has told me about a different Susan. I must find the right one. You all through? I guess so. Come on, Bill. Mm -hmm. Come on, Roger. No, I think he's right. The more he knows about Susan, the better chance he has. Oh, so you're going to stay and pour your little heart out. Well, I have to. Mike has evidently given the impression that Susan is nothing but a glamorous party girl. And you must have convinced him that she was a mental giant. Sit down, Aiken, and I'll tell you about the real Susan. Might as well begin with the Susan I first knew. Truthful, honest, earthy, sincere Susan. Yeah. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh. Oh, well, nothing, nothing. Well, we'll be running along now. When I first met Susan, she was very young. I was fed up with Broadway. Everywhere I went, there were a million would-be actresses. In fact, I was seeing women in my sleep. Just girls, girls, girls. 
So I ran up to Rhode Island and took a little cabin in the most desolate spot I could find. But there was an actress I knew named Mona. Mona! Angel! Darling. <laughs> Aren't you glad to see me? Delighted. Take the post road back. It's shorter. <laughs> It's going to be so cozy, just the two of us. Now, look, Mona, you get right back in that car. I've got work to do. Of course we have. Lots of it. Now, oh, listen, Mona, for the hundredth time, you're not going to play Joan of Arc. Why can't I play Joan of Arc? Well, among other reasons, Joan of Arc was a sweet, innocent girl. But, Roger, I'm sweet. And you're such a good director. Uh, well, I'm not that good. Come on. Goodbye. Oh, don't be silly. I'll be right back. If you could put me up for the night. Mm, I think so. Come in. Been fishing? Not exactly. I just rode out from shore for a little peace and quiet. Lots of it around here. How far is it from the mainland? Mm, about uh, two miles. That ought to be safe, unless the aquacade shows up. Huh? Uh, you got a telephone here? Sorry, but I ain't. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Room's right over here. Uh -huh. How'd you like to take a steady border for a while? Calculate I could fix it. Oh, nice. Very nice. Have your supper? No. Well, I guess we can take care of you. More chef over here. Oh, thank you. Come out of there. What are you doing here? I live here. Really? My name's Susan. I see. You're wasting your time. I beg your pardon. I'm not doing any musicals this season, get it? No musicals. In fact, I'm not casting anything. Now do you understand? Fred, I don't. Then why did you sing? I don't know. Why does anybody sing? Because I'm happy, I guess. Happy? Now look here, whatever your name is, uh, Susan, that Peter Pan outfit doesn't fool me one bit. You know who I am, don't you? Yes. Well, who am I? You're the new boarder. You also know my name, don't you? No. Roger Burton. Well, what are you mad about? And furthermore, you know that I'm a well-known producer, don't you? What do you produce? Are you trying to rib me? I produce plays. Oh, plays. What did you think I produced? Rabbits out of a hat? No, something important like, like wheat or locomotives or, or something like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be rude. Uh, you better sit down and have your chowder while it's hot. It's quite good. I made it myself. Mm. Are you sure you didn't know who I was? No. You never saw my name in the newspapers? Oh, I never read newspapers. Why not? 
Oh, because they're, they're full of, of murders and robberies and people who say awful things about one another. I, I like happy things. Mm. Where do you find them? Oh, in books sometimes. And sometimes in plays, huh? No, no, I never read plays. Oh, come now. You'd like to be an actress, though, wouldn't you? Oh, I haven't time for such foolishness. <laughs> foolishness? Now, look here. You, you'd like to be a star. Star? Yes. Well, maybe I would. Huh, I thought so. I think I'd like to be Jupiter. Or, or maybe Venus would be better. Are you serious? I'm talking about a stage star. Oh, that? You mean a lot of people wearing makeup and pretending to be somebody they aren't? Oh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Well, now I've seen everything. A pretty girl who doesn't want to go on the stage and thinks it's silly. And can cook, too. <laughs> you didn't even know who I was, did you? No. That's right. You didn't know who I was. Well, you see, uh, I'm kind of important. Uh, that is, I, I think I might happen to have a few clippings with me. Uh, reviews of my last play. Hi. Get down, you horse. Brody, no, down. Take it easy, Brody. Brody, get down. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a shame that dog likes me so much. I like you too. That's nice. In fact, I like you very much. In fact, Say, I was uh, going to. What time is it? Must be close to lunchtime. I'm hungry. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy said you've got a hollow leg. <laughs> now, is that a nice way to talk to a guest? Oh, you're not a guest. You're only a boarder. And anyway, $15 a week isn't very much for anyone with your appetite. You always tell the truth, don't you, Susan? Of course. What else? Nothing else. I think it's wonderful. In fact, I didn't think there was a woman left who could tell the truth. Never change, would you? Come on, let's climb up to the top of the rock. Don't you think you're too old to be climbing cliff? I'm sorry. It's all right. You're right ahead being on it. I love it. Of course, there's no need to overdo it. I thought you'd gone to bed. I did, but I couldn't sleep. Would you do me a favor? Favor? Oh, favor. What is it? Fix my clock. Hmm. What's the matter with it? Doesn't seem to know what time it is. Pardon me, but uh, you're in my light. Oh. You know, I'm I'm not much of a clock fixer. Pretty good cigarette lighter fixer. No good on clock. It's ticking now, but but the hands don't move. Now don't sit there, will you? Look, the, the, the hands don't behave. No, no, stop. Uh, no. Go sit on the bench. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't know you didn't like for people to sit on the arm of your chair. Uncle Jemmy loves to have me sit on the arm of his chair. Your Uncle Jemmy is a very old man. Besides, he's your uncle. What do you mean by that? Mm, nothing, nothing. Don't stand there either. Why? Because I'm afraid. Afraid you'll get burned. Damn. Well, if it's the clock that's making you cross, then just forget it. The clock isn't making me cross. We cross a lot of clock. Why don't you go to bed? Why should people go to bed when they don't sleep? Oh, I'll fix it tomorrow. <sighs> Where are you going? I'm going out to get some air. Anything to make you angry? Oh, certainly not. On the contrary, you've, uh, uh, I've got a couple of things I've got to get off my mind. Well, can I go with you? Like that. Oh. What's all the rumpus?
noisy people. They always want to find a place that's quiet so that they can make noise. Roger! Roger! Wait for me, Roger! Wait a minute! Roger! Please wait Hello. for me. Now what do you want? Nothing. I... Well, I just thought I'd walk with you and maybe help you get whatever's bothering you off your mind. Button your coat. Yes, sir. Didn't it occur to you that I might be running away from you? But I, I thought you liked me. I do. But then why do you run away from me if you like me? I, I don't understand. I don't think you do at that. Explain, please. Now, look, you said you were going to help me get what was bothering me off my mind, didn't you? All right, don't talk. Just walk. Don't say anything. Talking doesn't do any good either. Well, maybe if you told me what bothered you, it would help. Uh oh. Pretty night, isn't it? I suppose so. <laughs> what do you mean you suppose so? Well, I never thought about the night as being pretty. Flowers are pretty and the birds, but pretty isn't a big enough word for the night. It's beautiful and mysterious and magnificent. I see what you mean. A million voices calling out through a veil of tears. What's that? Oh, nothing. Just the line that Joan of Arc was supposed to have used. You know all about Joan of Arc, don't you? Mm-hmm. She listened to the voices of the stars and the trees and the night, and they called her a witch. That's right. But it's true that they were fools not to know she was telling the truth. Don't you ever look at the stars and wonder if they're lonely? Look, they're, they're winking. No kidding. Mm-hmm. And the trees murmur, and the, the ocean roars and bellows when the tide comes in, and, and whispers when it goes out. And they're saying things to one another and to us, too, if only we'd listen. And do you understand them? Well, of course. They're telling us to be brave, and to be strong, and be truthful, and to be kind, and to be happy. Come on. Right, where, where are we going? Come on. Come on. What have I done now? Now what's the matter? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Here, read this. What for? Never mind what for. Read it. There, where it says Joan of Arc. And so you... Now, wait a minute. First of all, let me tell you what it's all about. You are Joan of Arc. It's the last scene of the play. You're being burned at the stake. It's your last chance to tell these people who are persecuting you what you think and believe. In a minute, they're going to stick a flaming torch to you. Land sakes, what for? 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 Because she's a great savior, a brilliant woman. A truthful, honest, earthy, sincere leader of the people. Because she's a saint. For goodness sake. Go ahead. And so you do condemn to death the maid whose only fault was being true, whose only folly that of listening to the voice of God. Nay, do not mock me. The shepherd girl is more wise than you with all your knowledge. The voices that I hear in the winds and in the trees and from the blue, blue sky of my own beloved France are louder and clearer than all the rattlings of your chains and crackling of your fires. You think you kill me? You give me life. Keep a talking for a woman to say when she's a burning up. Susan, you've got it. The what? What I've been looking for, the voice, the quality, everything. I'm going to make an actress out of you. An actress? But, but I don't want to be an actress. But you've got to be. Do you think I meet people like you every day? Oh, but, but actress... Don't argue with me! But don't shout at me! I don't want to be one. Listen, you little idiot. Do you realize you're getting a chance that any girl in her right sense would cut her arm off for? I'm going to make you famous, a star on Broadway. I don't want to be a star on Broadway. But Sue, honey, it pays better than housekeeping. Oh, well, I only want yeah, to be... Yeah, you want to be Jupiter. No Venus. The Venus. This, this, it's a sweet, tender thought, but there's no future in it. I'm going to make an actress out of you. I don't want to be an actress. 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 And the voices that I hear in the winds and the trees, in the blue, blue sky of my own beloved France, are louder and clearer to me than all the rattling of your chains and crackling of your fires. You think you kill me. You give me life. Perfect. Oh, Roger, I don't want to be an actress. Now listen, Susan, are you going to start this thing all over again? What do you want to do? Be stuck on this mud flat here for the rest of your life? It's not a mud flat. It's a 
It's a beautiful island, and I love it. Instead of being a silly little country girl on your beautiful island, you're going to be a celebrated woman. Uh, women will envy you. Dozens of men will oh, fight but you. I don't want that. So don't be ridiculous. Every woman likes to have a lot of men run after her. I've had that. Can I speak to you for a moment, please? Uh, I'm sorry for the way I yelled at you just now, but we've been working so hard and rehearsing so much, I suppose I'm a little on edge. I'm sorry, too. I, I guess I was just a little nervous. Ah, uh, yes. You were so excited, you forgot to tell the truth. I did? Yes, you said you'd had lots of men run after you. Well, that's true. Yeah, what, what's true? Well, last year, the Coast Guard anchored off here for a whole day. They were all over the island. Oh, you're a charming child, Susan. I'm not a child. You've never been in love, have you? I don't suppose you've ever had anybody in love with you, either, have you? Yes. You have? Well, of course, it's none of my business, but I'm just curious. Who was it? The mailman. Oh, that old geezer. Why, he's old enough to be your grandfather. Oh, that's the new mailman. There was an old one, you know. The new mailman is old, but the, the old mailman was young. I see. And he was in love with you? Well, he said so. He, he was trying to kiss me all the time. Did you let him? Oh, of course not. Why? Oh, it was kind of silly. And he said I'd love it if I did, but I didn't. What's the matter? Look, Susan, in a few days we'll be going to New York. I think I'd better tell you something right now. I'm in love with you, Susan. Oh, but of course I love you too. Didn't you know that? I, I don't think you quite understand. I said I was in love with you. Well, is there a difference? Oh, yes, there's quite a difference. I love football and I love tenderloin steaks rare, but I, I'm not in love with them. I'm in love with you. Well, that's what I meant too. But how do you know? Well, I... I'm going to be an actress, am I not? And I didn't want to be. And I let all those lines by heart. I let you shout at me and bully me until sometimes I thought I could throw that silly old script at your head, but I didn't. I did what you wanted me to do, didn't I? Isn't that being enough? Yes. Yes, I guess it is. Will you marry me, Susan? I certainly will. Tell me, do you think it would be silly if I kissed you? Well, I'd have to try it first. Well? That's nice. That's very nice. In fact, now I'm sorry about the mailman. Joan of Arc. Really? Yes, I've done everything from Macbeth to Seven Keys to Ball Paint, but somehow I... Oh, now, you just sit right there, Miss Darrell. I'll see who it is. Miss Mona, how do you do? My, you certainly do oh, look beautiful. Oh, still, dear. Don't get up. I'm Mona Kent. How do you do? Oh, pardon me. I thought, sure, you two ladies were acquainted. Well, we're going to fix that right away. I've appeared in several of your husband's plays. Yes, I know. I've seen your picture and I read about you in the scrapbook. Roger asked me if I wouldn't come back and take a look at your makeup. I told him I thought it was a pretty presumptuous thing to oh, do, no, but... not at all. I don't know very much about this sort of thing. I, I'd be very grateful. Evie! Is how far I've been called? Yes, Miss Donna. Well, you know I'm so nervous. <laughs> Evie, will you be a dear and run across the street and get a pint of brandy? You don't mind, do you? No, 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 no. I get shaky on an opening night. I don't care whose it is. How, how do I look? Well, your eyebrows are far too light. And your lips are far too pale. Uh. Oh, there I go. Your nerves again. You seem extremely cool yourself. Shouldn't I be? 
Of course. You're a lucky girl. So many beginners have stage fright. Here it is, Miss Mona. Thank you, Evie. Just don't think of anything but your lines. And don't start worrying if some of the other actors forget theirs. The best thing to do is just go on with yours, regardless. And if you should feel you're going to faint. Faint? Why, well, I've never fainted in my life. Oh, don't worry. You probably won't. Here, drink this. The best thing in the world is steady your nerves. Feel better? Much better. <laughs> Eva, why don't you run out and take a look at the opening? You always used to love to. I'll help Miss Darrell with a wardrobe. Oh, I'd love to, Miss but... Miss Darrell I... won't mind, will you, dear? Oh, of course not. I'll run along now, oh, Eva. I... Get a knife for the celebrity. Well, I'll be right back, Miss Darrell. And, and if Mr. Burton... I'll uh... be responsible to Mr. Burton. Now, shoo. <laughs> She's a dear, isn't she? She was with me for two years. You don't feel shaky, do you? Well, I, I do, just, just a bit. Well, you better have another short joke. Here, yeah, you like changes for the last act. Okay. Evie. Huh? I told you not to leave Miss Darrell alone. Oh, she isn't alone, Mr. Burton. Miss Mona's with her. Mona? Are you drunk? <laughs> What's the matter? Do you think I was going to get stage fright? I saw it right now. Get out. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Where's she going? <laughs> What's the matter? Well, don't stand there gaping. Hold the curtain. Get Dr. Johnson and some black coffee. Oh. Sit down. <laughs> Line 30. Not too bad. All right, dear. I still can't understand how you fell for it. Couldn't you see what she was up to? Well, she said that you'd sent her in to help me, and it seemed the most natural thing in the world to do. I'll fix her if it's the last thing I do. I'll see to her that no other New York producer hires her. She won't even be able to carry a spear. All right, Frank. Right. Cut your house lights and throw in the dinners. Think you can make it? Good luck, darling. Seventy bucks on a Saturday night. We could do better in a hot dog stand. Yeah, and I never had such rave notices in my life. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but wrap it up. Might as well give it a couple of weeks more. Let's get a plug in the papers. We're doing smash business. I haven't got any dough. I'm flat. Hello? Oh, yes, sweetheart. Yes, I have the receipts right here. Monday night, eighty dollars. Tuesday night, a hundred and ten. Wednesday matinee. Are those two noughts? Yeah. Yes, dear, that's right. Not enough money to pay the ushers. I'm afraid I'll have to close if I can't dig up some money. Well, uh, goodbye, darling. Well, he says that things are so bad that unless he can raise some more money, why, he'll have to close the show. Do you mind if we print that? Oh, of course not. It's the truth. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Miss Darrell. It isn't very often that we interview anyone as frank as you. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Susan, did you? How could you? What's the matter? Listen, dear, do you have to tell everything you know to the newspapers? Well, have I done something wrong? You certainly have. You've wrecked every chance I ever had of getting any new money for the play. Yes, but you told me Listen, that this... what I tell you and what you're supposed to tell the newspapers are two different things. Will you stop being so outspoken? I'm sorry. I'm... Try to remember. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Oakleaf. Well, just a minute, I'll ask him. Mrs. Oakleaf wants to know if we can have dinner with her tomorrow night. Certainly not. Certainly not, Mrs. Oakleaf, but thanks just the same. Hello, Hello. Again?
Sweetheart, you'll never guess what happened. Well, I, I can't imagine, darling. What? What? What happened? Get down, you horse. Oh, don't scold him. He loves you. I know, but what's going to happen when I get old and weak? Well, you shouldn't be mad at him anyhow. Oh, I couldn't be mad at anyone today. My troubles are over. The Marines have landed and I found an angel. Hmm? Oh, no, no. No wings. Money. Oh, you mean you found somebody to back your show? That's right. Mr. Donald H. Cusp. Cusp? Yes. Short on name, but long on dough. <laughs> That's a funny name, Cusp. It's <laughs> a beautiful name. <laughs> In fact, I've invited him to dinner tomorrow night. Now, Susan, I want you to listen very carefully. I want you to treat Mr. Cusp with great dignity. And whoever else is about, I want you to favor Mr. Cusp. And whatever you do, don't say anything that will upset Mr. Cusp. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'll be very good. Mm. There you are, Melvina, my cherub. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Roger. You've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? Oh, my goodness. A pound and three quarters. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. Good evening. Will you tell Mr. Burton that Mr. Donald Cusp is here? Oh, oh yes, ma'am, I will. Where's your charming wife? Oh, she'll be here in a moment. <laughs> Uh, will you excuse me a moment? I'll be right back. Sure. Mr. Donald Cusp. Great. And Miss Mona Kent. What? Miss Kent? Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, how are you, Mr. Burton? Oh, hello, Mr. Cusp. I'm glad to see you. I, I think you know Miss Kent. Oh, yes, but I didn't know that Miss Kent knew you. I mean, that is, that you knew Miss Kent. Well, Roger, where have you been? It's been in all the columns. What? That you knew Mr. Cusp? Uh, uh, Mona and I are engaged to be married. No kidding. Uh, I mean, congratulations. Uh, glad to see you, Mona. It's been ages, hasn't it? Yes, and I've thought about you hundreds of times. Isn't it thrilling? We're just too happy for words. I suppose you're surprised. No. Oh, well, now that I come to think of it, uh, shall we go in? Love them. Shall we tell Roger right away what we decided? About the show, I mean. We think it's a perfectly wonderful script, and I... That is, we thought that possibly you could find a part for me in it. Oh, sure. Of course, I think I'm a little too old for the lead. Nonsense. Isn't that what you say, Mr. Burton? Yeah, nonsense. <laughs> I mean, of course you're not too old. There, that settles it, sweet. You play the lead. Right, Mr. Burton? Certainly. I had you in mind all the time. Oh, you're a couple of darlings. <laughs> Mr. Hughes, you're Miss Kent and Mr. Cusk. Yes, how do you know, Ray and Vivian. Oh, yes, I'm glad to see you. It's been a long time. Uh, really? Mona, would you mind introducing Mr. Cusp around? I'll get you a drink. Fine. You look very happy, Miss Kent. Oh, I am. Roger and Mr. Cusp are going to do a new show, and they've just told me I'm to be the lead. Susan! Susan! Hello, Hello, Mrs. Burton. Oh, Hello, darling. Mrs. Oakley. Hello, dear. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Well, your diet hasn't helped you a bit, has it? Oh, my dear, I've lost a pound and three quarters. Really? It doesn't look it. <laughs> Miss Burton seems like a real nice fellow. Oh, Roger's sweet. We're the best of friends. Susan, darling, it's so nice to see you again. Why don't you do another show, dear? I thought you were awfully good. I argued with everybody about it. What are you doing here? Oh, you'll find out, dear. It's really on account of Roger's new show, or... Perhaps I should say our new show. You see, I'm going to do the lead. But you're crazy. Roger wouldn't even let you into a theater. I don't quite understand. Why, he wouldn't let her carry a spear. I think you'll find he's changed his mind, dear. Uh, Susan, uh, I've been looking for you. This is Mr. Cusp. How do you do, Mr. Cusp? You remember my speaking about Mr. Cusp, don't you, dear? Uh, Mr. Cusp is also a friend of Miss Kent's. In fact, Miss Kent is engaged to Mr. Cusp, mm -hmm. which I think calls for congratulations from everybody. Of course, you've met Miss Kent. Yes, I have met Miss Kent, and I'd rather not have met Miss Kent again. Oh, don't you mind my wife, Mr. Cusp. She's a great one for a gag, just a river at heart. Well, that means joking, but I'm not joking at all. You're only being polite to her because she's in our house. Isn't that true? Well, I haven't learnt that lesson yet. Would you kindly leave, Miss Kent? Uh, but excuse me, but excuse me, but I don't understand all this Broadway humor. Well, frankly, Mr. Cusp, neither do I. And you look like a nice little man, and if I were you, I wouldn't have anything to do with Miss Kent. She's not a very nice person. Now, Susan, this is an outrage. Let's get out of here. Okay. But let me tell you something, sweetheart. That precious little husband of yours would get down on his knees to have me do this show, but he won't have to because there isn't going to be any show. Come on, love boat. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I... Well, I suppose I was rude. Rude? Well, she was telling me she was going to have the lead in the play, and I knew it wasn't true. And anyway, Mr. Cusp had to find out sometime, didn't he? 
Russia, I was only telling the truth. The truth? Who told you to tell the truth all the time? It just isn't civilized. Well, I thought you said you loved me for telling the truth. You told me I was the only perfectly honest person you'd ever met. But you can't be that honest. It just doesn't make sense. You're in New York now, not on Robinson Crusoe's Island. You've got to learn to adapt yourself, Susan. Can't you color your statements a little? Now do you see? No, I don't see. How can white be anything but white? I don't understand. Oh, I'll say you don't. Look what you did just now. Made me lose a man with $50,000 burning a hole in his pocket. Get me into a hundred jams, everybody in New York laughing at me. I guess you're telling me that I'm pretty stupid. That's what you're saying, isn't it, Roger? Being honest and telling the truth is, is stupid. Well, if you want it that way, yes. Well, I guess we both made a mistake. Maybe we did. I know I did. It's all very true that I loved you because you were decent and honest. But I also thought you were human. I'm human, Roger. You're too perfect to be human. You haven't any faults. You're like a goddess. Well, you can love a goddess. You can even worship one. Maybe you can even live with one on Olympus. But not on East 74th Street. I didn't realize how violent the quarrel had been. Sometime later, when I went into her room, she was gone. Next I heard from her, I was notified that she was getting a divorce. I let her get it. Poor Susan. Poor Susan. Why do you keep on saying poor Susan? You make the whole thing look as if it were my fault. It was your fault. You destroyed her faith in men. Now I understand a lot of things. Poor little kid. After knowing you, she was afraid to tell the truth. Well, you're a stupid cluck. Well, maybe I am a stupid cluck. But I was never cruel. I just didn't understand, that's all. Well, I can now that I've told you about the real Susan, I sincerely hope that you make a success of it. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, Roger, what was the name of that place where I first met you? The Mayfair Room. Yeah, that was it. i just gotten into town and wanted to see a little life. I was looking for a pigeon. <laughs> that's right. I was sure a country boy, wasn't I? Thought a pigeon was a bird. That Roger always was a cagey guy. He was sitting there at the bar when I came in. And he didn't even know I was alive. He didn't see me at first, but I was just busy taking in the sights. Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening. Shake your hat? Oh, sure. Excuse me, sir. Anytime, mister. This is the right gay place, isn't it? It's a crummy joint. Yes, sir. Would you join me in a drink, sir? I don't drink with strangers. Well, it be, sir. Uh, the bourbon. The double. Want to join me, partner? Sorry, sir. Not allowed to drink during working hours. One on me. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Here's to you, sir. Now, you have one on me, sir. Oh, well, I believe I will. Hey, buddy, give this gentleman a double of what he's been drinking. <laughs> Roger, darling. How are you? Hello, Angel Face. Uh, hello, girls. How are you? Fine. I understand you're doing a new show. You won't forget us, will you? Oh, don't worry. I'll give you a ring. Oh, good. You don't have to call. Just come right up any time. Yeah. Bye, handsome. <laughs> Gosh, just like a flower show. Yeah, just average. Boy, that tall one really must be in love with you. Not in love with me. She's in love with the producer. You see, I'm in the theatrical business. Well, she may be in love with the producer, but you're the one she invited up. <laughs> Gosh, must be great to be in the theatrical business. <laughs> you think so? Well, if you're really interested, why don't you come to my office tomorrow? Perhaps I can help you out. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Getting out, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Heads in. Uh, let's see. Uh, dear sirs, Mr. Burton 
has requested that I check on an overcharge. So if you have an appointment, there's no use waiting. Uh, but... Why, Miss Terrell, I didn't know you. Haven't seen you in months and months. Where have you been? Hello, Chick. Oh, I just got in from Reno this morning. Oh, uh, yes, I was sorry to hear about it. Of course you were. Do you think I could see Mr. Burton for a moment? Sure. Come on, Rudy. Uh, look, he, he's pretty busy right now. I wonder if you could give me a telephone number or maybe come back later. I only wanted to see him for a moment. Well, I know, but right now, he's closing a big deal. His new backer's in there, a big lumberman named Ward. Mr. Burton is pouring it to him, you know, selling him a bill of goods. So, well, you know how you are, Miss Darrell. <sighs> what I'm getting at is, this is no time for the truth. I suppose I was a pretty stupid little girl, wasn't I, Chief? Oh, Mr. Saunders, we're from the Burns Dancing Academy. Oh, yes, just a minute. Uh, goodbye, Miss Darrell. Goodbye, Chick. Mr. Burton, the girls from Burns are here. Bring them in. All right, ladies. Brody, stay here. All right, girls, line up over here. Quiet down. Get up with your skirts. Come on, snap it up. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. 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 Alice will find you. Okay. Okay. Uh. Hello, Roger. Oh. Hello, Su Susan. Uh, well, uh, uh, the rest of the girls are all right. That's all, girls. Thank you very much. All right, out we go. Uh, uh, don't do that. Uh, don't, uh, don't do it. How did, where'd you get those clothes? Charged them. Didn't you get the bill? The bill? Aren't you glad to see me, Roger? Sure, of course. Come on, uh, the other officer, I want to talk to you. Oh, but first, I want to meet Mr. Ward. What do you think you're doing, anyway? Adapting myself, mm. you know. Well, if you won't introduce us, I guess I'll simply. Yeah, have Mr. To... Ward, this is Miss Susan Darrell, a very splendid actress. Come on. How do you do? I'm delighted to meet you. I've heard so much about you. About me? Mm, now that I see you, I know they're all true. Oh, look here, Susan. If you don't mind, I. Don't interrupt me, sweetie pie. Mm. I, I think it's awfully important for the producer and leading lady to be good friends, don't you, Mr. Ward? Well, yes, I guess so. Now look here, Susan. Will you excuse us, Mike? We. Mike. Oh, you look as though your name should be Mike. So big and strong. Oh, do you mind if I call you Mike? That's my name. A and you call me Susan? Now, look, Susan. I don't know what this is all about. But it might interest you to know that, one, there's no part in the show for you. And two, Mr. Ward is just contemplating taking an interest. He hasn't taken it yet. Oh, don't be silly, Roger. If I do the play, you you'd want to be in on it, wouldn't you? Well, I... You mean you'd take a chance on me? Oh, I sure wouldn't it, Susan. Oh, I knew a man with eyes like yours wouldn't let poor little me down. But I, I do believe you're blushing. Roger, wherever did you get this wonderful man? He, he's so sweet. He's such an old love boat. Love boat? Uh, what time is it? Quarter to one. Would you mind taking me to lunch? Yeah, listen, love boat. Uh, Mr. Ward and I have a little business conference, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, tell him it's all settled and we better go, because if, we, if we're late, we won't get a table. All right. How much money do you think would swing it, Roger? Thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars? Oh. Mm. Well, you see, Roger, I'm a lumberman. And when I invest money, why, I can see what I'm buying. The trees are all standing right there. Well, of course, if you're not interested, that... Oh, certainly he's interested. Provided I play the lead. Well, yes, but that's a heap of timber. Listen, I told you before, there's nothing in the show for you. But you said I was the one perfect actress to play it. When did I say that? The other day, at, at luncheon, on your yacht? Yacht? I haven't even got a yacht. Oh, don't bite, Roger. He's a great one for a gag. Anything for a rib. Come on, I'm famished. Yeah. I'll have him back by 3 o'clock. Is that all right? That'll be ducky. Just ducky. Oh, and uh, one thing more. Take care of Rudy for me, will you? Rudy! Papa! That's it. Goodbye, love boat. Get down. Get down, you horse.
Please come this way, Mr. Ward. Shall we finish this dance? Love to. There you are. Finish 28. Correct, sir? Very good. Please. Oh, sure. Happy? Happy as a chipmunk on a chinkapin log. Mm -hmm. What? I've never been a terribly unhappy guy, but I never knew what real happiness was until I met you. That's what I was telling you that I wanted to talk to you about in the cab, but we got here too quick. Well, you can tell me on the way home. Um, let's dance. Oh, no, please, please, Susan. Well, if I don't say what's on my mind now, I'll have to start getting my nerve up all over again. That'll take me another whole month. Oh, Mike, darling, I know what you're going to say. Well, for a cow's sake, help me say it. Oh, Mike, you're a dear. And if I were going to marry anybody, I think he'd be you. But as long as... Hello, Susan. Hi, Mike. Hi, Roger. Mind if Susan dances with me? Well, we were talking about something, but of course, if Susan would really like to dance... It... Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Susan, what's the matter with you? You losing your mind? No, I don't think so. Well, I think so. Neglecting your work and staying out, chasing all over town at all hours of the morning. Who do you think you're fooling? Not you. Certainly not me. You're no glamour girl, and you know it. Why don't you stop pretending? Maybe I'm not pretending. Maybe I was pretending when I was that simple little country girl. Do you ever think of that? Oh, excuse me. Look, why don't you watch where you're going? Now, listen. If you think you're making me jealous, you've got another thing coming. Making you jealous? Why, you egotistical... Oh, let go of this. Yes? What do you think you're doing? Me, I know my way around. Poor Mike. Sooner or later, you're going to break his heart. Did it ever occur to you that I might be in love with Mike? <laughs> yes. When it did, I stayed up half the night laughing. <laughs> might interest you to know that he was proposing to me when you interrupted. Good thing I interrupted, huh? You wouldn't marry him and you know it. Oh, I wouldn't? Well, why wouldn't I? Well, oh, she's still in love with me. Oh, that does it! You stay right where you are. Stay right there. That. Good boy. Stay right there. Get up. Gee, what do you know about that? Where's Miss Darrell? Upstairs asleep. At 12 noon? What time did she get in? 4 o'clock this morning. Why in heaven's name do you let her stay out until 4 o'clock in the morning? Mr. Burton, I work for her. She doesn't work for well, me. Well, that's just the point. You should be loyal. See that she stays in good health. Shall I tell her you're here? No, thanks. I'll tell her myself. Oh, Mr. Burton, huh? I have to go to the market. Would you mind answering the door and telephone? Of course not. Ah, uh, Rhody. Too bad you can't make her do that. Susan. Mm -hmm. Who is it? It's me, Roger. Let me in. I want to talk to you. I say, I want to talk to you. Well, I'm not dressed. But this is important. What's not important? I say, this is important. Well, why didn't you say so? What is it? Uh, look, Susan, I, I've been up all night uh, thinking about you. Uh, I mean, about us. Well, I, I can't hear you. 
I say I've been up all night. Well, go to bed! Look, Susan, uh, maybe we've made a big mistake. You see, uh, uh, What? I say we made a mistake. What on earth are you doing? Well, I'm trying to tell you that... Oh, wait, wait till I answer that infernal door. Oh. Oh, hi, Roger. Hi, oh, Mike. What's the idea of the bag? Catching the four o'clock train back to Montana. Oh, I brought my bag over here so I could have more time with Susan. <laughs> so you're going home, eh? Well, I'm sorry to see you go, but I suppose it's the best thing after all. You know, a fellow like you is more at home in the wide open spaces, and I guess Susan will miss you too. Oh, I'll be gone a week. That's it. Huh? Gonna sell my business and come back here to live. Here? Yeah. In New York? That's right. A gay gal like Susan, she wouldn't be happy in the wild Willie West. What's Susan got to do with it? Well, did she tell you? We're going to be married. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't seen her yet. Uh, Are you going to congratulate me? Oh, of course. Uh, congratulations. Gee, you can't imagine what it's like marrying a girl like her. Hmm? Well, I guess maybe you can't let that. Good morning. My darling, is it that late? <laughs> Roger, what were you screaming at me through the door? Who made a mistake? I guess I did. About that uh, gown you were going to wear in the first act. You know, you wanted it dark and I wanted it vivid. Well, I guess it's too vivid. Yes, I, I guess it could be darker. Yeah. Um, uh, wh why don't you go out and whip up some of those special scrambled eggs and we'll eat here? Oh, that's a good idea. Never tasted my scrambled eggs, have you, Roger? No. Oh, I'd love to. Okay. Hello? Oh, Mrs. O'Cleave, how are you? A, a luncheon date? Oh, I'm afraid Mike must have forgotten. He hasn't shown up all morning. What's the matter? I just talked to her. I told her I was leaving the hotel. Oh, excuse me, darling. Oh, Mike, where on earth have you been? Oh, he's just arrived. He looks all worn out, poor thing. Uh, uh, we have a date with Mrs. Oakleaf, darling. Uh, he, he says that uh, since he talked to you that he's had a business call and won't be able to make it. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. Some other time. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> doesn't she lie beautifully? Yeah, yeah, beautifully. Well, scramble eggs coming up. Hi, Roy. Dog will eat them up. Oh, no, they wrestle and play like that all the time. Oh, just as happy as if he had good sense, huh? What does that mean? You know perfectly well what it means. He's walking at least five inches off the floor, practically floating. Well, I'm glad he's happy. He's not happy. He's hypnotized on a merry-go-round. Down deep inside, he'd rather shoot out, not shake a conga. He certainly doesn't fit in with a woman like you. Well, what's wrong with my kind of woman? Everything. You're a phony, you're dishonest, you're a complete and utter liar. Why, well, you're getting so you can't even tell anyone the right time. Adapt yourself, he said. <laughs> well, you didn't adapt yourself. You went to the other extreme. Mike certainly doesn't want a woman like you are now. Well, what kind of woman does he want? Well, he might have liked the woman you were. Oh, but I don't want to be that kind of woman. She was a stupid, shy little violet. You don't want her. You couldn't get her back if you tried. You played the part too long and too well. You took the shrinking little violet you're talking about and painted and perfumed it until there's nothing left but a fake. The violet's gone. With it. I... I yes, you're right. I... I'm a fool. I... You hate me, don't oh, you? Oh, no. Don't, don't get excited. Oh, yes, you do. You hate me. Everybody hates me. I am dishonest, but I only did it to hold Mike and not lose him the way I lost you. Oh. Oh, Take it easy. Easy, Susan. Easy. I didn't mean to hurt you. Why, Mike, you haven't got the eggs done already. No, not yet. I couldn't find the butter. Oh, well, it's in the icebox. Well, I guess I better be going. So long, everybody. Seems in an awful big hurry, doesn't he? Well, well, he had a call. I'm getting so I don't like him. He's always hanging around, and he... Say, 
Have you been crying, honey? Oh, no, 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 it, it's nothing, it's nothing. Did he say something to hurt your feelings? No, he only said that... Well, what? Nothing. Tell me, what did he say? Well, he just told me his brother passed away. Oh, well, I thought maybe... Oh, guys, that's awful. Well, I, I felt so sorry for him. That's why I was crying. Well, that's life. Yes. Yeah. What'd you say the butter was? In the icebox. I, I, I feel so awful. I, I think I'll go upstairs and lie down for a while. Okay, honey, you go ahead. I understand. Susan Darrell? aren't they? Both? Well, they're cut in the shape of violet. Why, Mr. Burton said it then. How do you know that, ma'am? Oh, both because they're violets. Oh, so that's the reason. They might be Johnny Jump Ups. Who would have said it if they were Johnny Jump Ups? Don't be silly, Nancy. Johnny Jump Ups have no significance. They're violets and all ties up. Wrap it up. If he thinks he can melt me with a present, he's got another thing coming. Wrap it up. Go on. Oh, you got it wrapped already. Did want to look at it just one more time. Well, call a messenger and have them return that to Mr. Burton. Yes, ma'am. How do you feel? Fine, fine. Well, that's good. You think you could eat something? Why, of course. Why not? Well, you didn't feel like eating a while back. And... Oh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, well, I've been thinking about what you said. About what I said? Well, e about life and death and how only people suffer when, when other people die. Did I say that? Yes, don't you remember? And I, I thought it was quite profound. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, by the way, honey, I stopped by a jeweler store to see about a ring. Oh, Mike, I told you last night I didn't want a ring. At least not for a little while. Well, you're going to get one. And the biggest one I can find. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> anyway, what I'm getting at is I found a sort of a thingamajig that I thought you might like, and I had him send it over. Thingamajig? Yeah, it was sort of a pin, clasp. I don't know what it was, but the fellow said it was cut in the shape of forget-me-nots. Oh, forget-me-nots. You've got to be here any minute, but, but if you don't like it, you can send it right back. What's the matter, honey? Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, you act like you're going to faint. I feel as I'm going to faint. Maybe you're hungry. That's it. I'm hungry. Well, I'll take care of you right away, honey. Scrambled eggs coming up. Forget me not. I don't follow you. Clint, Mr. Ward said it. Mr. Ward? Now listen very carefully to what I have to tell you. Mr. Ward mustn't know a thing about it till I get it back from Mr. Burton, understand? Yes, ma'am. And if you should get curious, why you don't know anything about it, you never heard of it. It wasn't delivered, and you didn't receive it, understand? Yes, ma'am. Wild horses couldn't drag it out of me. Where's Mr. Ward now? He's in the kitchen scrambling some eggs. Oh, no, not again. Roger, 
Roger, I'm afraid we're in a little trouble. What do you mean, we're in trouble? You probably mean you're in trouble. Has that trip got anything to do with the trouble? Well, it was sent to me without a card, and so I thought that you sent it. You thought I sent it. Why? Well, they're forget-me-nots, but I thought they were violets, and Nancy said they were Johnny Jump Ups. Oh. Well, it didn't come from me, did it? No, and that's very characteristic of you, Roger. I should have known you didn't send it. You were always very thoughtless and never thought of sending a woman anything. And that's why you thought it did come from me, huh? Well, I didn't think. I just jumped at conclusions. Well, who did send it? Well, Mike sent it, and I should have known that from the start. He's entirely different from you. He's thoughtful. I see, and that's why you thought he didn't send it, huh? Oh, stop trying to be funny. After all, you got me into this mess. Uh, me? Of course. Where's, where's the talk? Yeah, been there. All right. Wrap it up again for me, will you? Hello? Oh, would you send a messenger up, please? Thank you. And then, hello, then I would like a Giddens Fifth Avenue, please. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to send it back to the jeweler and then have him send it back to me. Well, wouldn't it be just as simple to take it home? No, too simple and, and too hard to explain to Mike. Hello, Giddens. Uh, this is uh, uh, Miss Darrow speaking. I'd like to speak to Mr. Giddens. Mm. Thank you. Oh. Hello, Mr. Giddens. Uh, this is, oh, uh, Susan, excuse me, Susan Darrow speaking. Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Well, I have a little favor to ask you, and, uh, well, I know I can trust in your discretion. Oh, um, Mr. Burton would like you to take this to Giddens Fifth Avenue. You better take a cab. Could I have some money, Roger, please? Gee, this is fun, isn't it? Thanks. Keep the change. Thank you. Well, Guinevere, where away now? Going back to my apartment and receive a very lovely present from a very thoughtful man. I see. And would you mind telling me what this rigmarole is all about? Oh, I want to receive it in Mike's presence. Well, supposing Mike isn't present. Oh, he'll be there. He was there when I left. The old dear was scrambling eggs. He was scrambling eggs when I left. What is he, making a career out of it? Who is it? It's me, Mike. The eggs are done. But, but he, he, he'll kill you if he finds me I here. killed you. No, get, get rid of him, quick. Hurry up. Go on. Hi, Mike. Hi, Roger. Glad to see you. How have you been? I mean, uh, what do you know? I know all about it, Roger. You do? Yeah. It's a pretty tough thing to happen to a guy. What? Death. Death? 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 Yeah. How old was he? Huh? How old was he? Well, I... I don't know exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm the same way. I have a tough time remembering exact age, too. About how old would you say? Oh, uh -huh. about five. Gee, only five? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, 35. Gosh, right in the prime of life, huh? Yeah. Well, as I was telling Susan, you've got to look at these things kind of sensible. That's why I came up here. I, I felt that I did want to offer my sympathy. <laughs> only brother? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he was the only brother. Now, listen, Mike, you don't understand. I, I... Mike, wait for... I can explain everything. Oh, no, it isn't the spring. It's love in blue. So I went back to Montana. Couldn't stay there, though. Too quiet. Think too much. So I came back to New York. I called her a couple times, but she was always out. At least Nancy said she was out. And one day, I got a message from her that she wanted to see me right away. Well, boy, I was walking on clouds. I got the same message about the same time. And when I got there... Just a minute. If my story is to be told, and it appears it is, I prefer to tell it myself. And it doesn't start at that point, either. I was living on Central Park West at the time, working on my new book, Man Has a Mission which afterwards turned out to be a bestseller. Oh, but you've read it, of course. No, I don't think I have. Can't you read? Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm such a busy man that I can't... Uh, don't apologize. You didn't read it all right. That's not as bad as reading it and failing to recognize its value, which is what certain individuals I know did. Anyway, every afternoon after I'd finished my work, I'd take a stroll in the park.
All right, now what do you think you're doing, huh? Sitting down, that's what I'm doing, sitting down. Well, you know you walk out and leave the chops on a stove, don't you? Stove what? So 50 cents goes up in smoke if I don't come in and yank them off there, so what? Now come on home, I'm hungry. I ain't never coming home, I'm through, you hear me? Certainly I hear you, I can hear you if I'm on the other side of the park even. What do you always want to start an argument in front of strangers for anyway? Well, how do you like that? I'm sitting here minding my own business and he comes along and starts yapping and I started the argument. How do you like that? Well, I... You hear that? I comes up and addresses her like a gentleman. You heard me, didn't you? No, I didn't. And you should smell his breath. I didn't have a drop. I'll leave it to him. <sighs> leave it to her. He can't hear. Maybe he can't smell. Okay. Put it up, please. There. It's only the hair tonic, like I told you. It's gone far enough. You're annoying the lady. He's annoying everybody. And you are annoying me. Hey, just a minute, bud. That's my wife you're talking to. Look, run along, will you please? Just who do you think you're talking oh, to? Oh, you're getting excited, miss. Miss, huh? She thinks we ain't legitimate. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Oh, I come just... on, let's get out. Oh, scared, huh? Certainly scared. I guess I'll have oh, to. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Wait a minute. What's the rush about? Wouldn't you like to sit down? You're all out of breath. Well, I'm sorry, but I just felt I had to get some distance between those people and me. That sort of thing can be well catching. Are you married? Uh, uh, no. Well, then you can't catch it. What do you mean by that? Simply that single people are immune. The germ of that ailment usually is contracted in the handling of marriage licenses. Well, then you don't believe in marriage. Theoretically, yes. Practically, I don't know. To begin with, so often the wrong people marry, and so rarely the right people marry. Suppose, for instance, I found in you exactly the right person for me to love. And suppose, oh, purely for the sake of discussion, you found in me the right person for you to love. We fall in love. Beautiful. But what do we do to retain that love? Well, we must lay siege to each other's hearts continuously. Yes, but then once that we have captured each other's hearts, the beauty of the siege has vanished. We hold lightly in our hands a possession. What is your name, anyway? My name is William Anthony. Oh, yes, I read your latest book. I thought you sounded like something I'd read somewhere. <laughs> did you like it? Uh, yes, I think I did. Oh, thank you, Miss Darrell. Oh, you know who I am? Yes, I uh, saw you in that comedy you did recently. <laughs> did you like it? I thought it stank. Are you always so truthful? Well, I'm seldom truthful, but I'm always honest. Is, is there a difference? Oh, of course there is. I'll explain it to you. You see, truth can be destructive. Honesty is always constructive. Truth can be cruel. Honesty is a trait of kindliness. I'll use an illustration. Suppose I say to you, I love you. And suppose, oh, purely for the sake of the discussion, you say you love me. Are we being honest? Hello, Nancy. How are you? How do you do, Mr. Ward? Miss Darrell sent word that she wanted to see me. How is she, anyhow? All right. I hope. Why? What's the matter? She's not sick. I hope not. What do you mean? Wait till you see her. Oh, good afternoon, Michael. Hi. Glad to see you again, Michael. Glad to see you. Mighty glad. Well, same old Michael. Yeah. Haven't changed at all. No, you haven't changed. How have you been? Oh, splendid, splendid. I brought you some flowers and some candy. Oh, well, that's sweet of you, but uh, really, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, it wasn't anything. Well, I don't mean that. I mean candy, well, you remember a frivolous Susan, don't you? Mm-hmm. And flowers, they should never be picked. Oh, I didn't pick them. I got them at the florist. Uh, pardon me, sir. I thought this was Miss Darrell's apartment. Come in, Roger. Susan. Hello, Roger. Oh, hello, Mike. Haven't we met somewhere before? If you're referring to any contact of our minds, we certainly have not. What are you made up for, an anarchist? External appearance is no bearing on internal harmony. Mm. What does that mean? It means a great deal. I've changed since I last saw you and Michael. You certainly have. Well, I used to dress frivolously. And though I didn't realize it at the time, I was only dressing to attract men. Yeah. 
Well, that was truthful, but it wasn't honest. Double talk. It's not double talk at all. When a woman dresses to appeal to all men, it's not honest, just truth. But when she dresses only to appeal to one man, that's not truthful, but it's honest. Do you understand? No. You understand, don't you, Michael? Oh, sure, sure. May I ask a question? Of course. Who's the man? What man? The man you're dressing honestly for, so you won't be truthful. That's a very impertinent question, Roger. But I'm glad you asked it. There is a man in whom I'm interested. But not for any commonplace reason that you would understand. But because of his great mind. And that's why I've asked you to come here today. His latest book has just been published. It would make an excellent play. A brave, courageous, intelligent play. Because of our old associations, I feel it's only fair to give you the opportunity of financing and producing it. Naturally, I will play the lead. Hmm. Man has a mission. By William Anthony. And, of course, Mr. Anthony will make the play adaptation himself. Well, I uh, believe that's all I've got to say. Are there any questions? No, no, no. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, give me a ring after you've finished. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes, yes, My name is William Anthony. I'm expecting to meet a Miss Darrell here. It's all right, Fred. I'll show him. Right this way, Mr. Anthony. Thank you. Mm. Hello, Bill. Hello, dear. I ordered you a drink. Oh, you psychic. So you're William Anthony, huh? Why, yes. I read your last book. Uh, did you see Burton and Ward? Well, don't you want to know how I liked it? Certainly. How did you like it? Well, not bad. Good. Oh, no. Not good. But not bad. Could you bring us two more drinks, please? Sure. Just what I'm here for. You uh, talked to Burton and Ward? Yes, they were very interested. Naturally. Sixteen standard steel twin screw cruisers. What did you say? I said sixteen standard steel twin screw cruisers. It's a little test I make when I drink alcohol. I've already had a couple. But what about the cigarettes? Well, as long as I can say it, I know I'm all right. Well, I should think so. I can't say it in the first place. As a matter of fact, alcohol affects me in a funny way. If I get too much, I lose all restraint. I don't know what I'm doing, and I agree with everybody. Really? Mm -hmm. All I can say is yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, people take advantage of you? Oh, they certainly do. And to make matters worse, I never can remember afterwards what happened. That's why I'm so cautious when I'm drinking. You might say I'm afflicted with alcoholic amnesia. children. They know no other form of expressing their simple inclinations. Yes, yes, the happiness of ignorance. Pathetic, isn't it? Yes, yes. Very pathetic. However, there is a possibility that under certain favorable conditions, a kiss might be a catalytic agent of a higher spiritual communion. Mm, I suppose so, but our relationship is on such a high plane that we can discard such primitive methods. Well, only primitive when you consider a kiss as an end in itself. It uh, may be and can be a means of ascending to a higher ethereal plane. Think so? I know so. Feeling any higher? A little. But then a light kiss can only mean a slight ascent. No. Waiter, hurry up with those drinks. Just passing the moon, you? I can hear the celestial harps playing Rachmaninoff's prelude. Two scotch old fashions. A 16 standard squinty. Waiter, the check. How about dinner? My apartment. Uh, well, I, I thought you liked it here. Oh, it's all right, but I'd like to be alone with you for once so that we could, could talk. Uh, what do you say? Uh, well, I don't want to put you to so much trouble. You're afraid to come to my apartment, aren't you, Susan? Uh, no, why should I be afraid? Well, then, how about it? You've never tasted my cooking. You know, I think I'm even a better cook than I am a writer. You've never tasted steak like my steak. I brought it on the flat top of the stove.
How do you do? Hi. I'm Mike Ward. Oh, glad to meet you. Why don't you come in? So you're Mr. Anthony, huh? Yes, sir. I mean, yes. I read that. So you don't believe in marriage, huh? Well, it seems to me, Mr. Ward, that my beliefs are my own affair. Not when you're hanging around Susan. Susan's a very nice girl, you understand? And she's gonna stay that way even if I have to poke someone in the nose. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, Mr. Ward. Wait just a minute. I think you've got me all wrong. I don't think I have. You... Oh, excuse me, just... Excuse me. Well, well. All set up for Little Red Riding Hood, huh? You know, it's a good thing Susan doesn't go in for parties like this. Yes, 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 isn't it? Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Wait a Ward, minute, I... wait a minute. Even you wouldn't squirt perfume around the room, would you, Mr. Anthony? Somebody's at the door. It's nobody. It's somebody. Yeah, but the, somebody's nobody. <laughs> They're always buzzing a bell. <laughs> Kids, you know, like to ring doorbells. <laughs> Mr. Ward, I... Oh, hello, Roger. Hello, Mike. Hello, Anthony. Glad to see you. Well, am I glad to see you. <laughs> well, I didn't know you two knew each other. Well, know him? Well, of course I know him. I, I was expecting you, wasn't I? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Ward, that there isn't enough for you, but you understand some other time, eh? No, I don't quite get this. Oh, come along, Roger, will you? I'd like to show you the stakes. Uh, uh, pardon me for not showing you up, Mr. Ward. You're Roger Burton, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I thought you were. How do you do? My name's Bill Anthony. Glad to know you. Look, will you help get rid of that guy for me? Well, are you afraid he'll make trouble if he finds out Susan's coming here? How'd you know she's coming here? The maid. I should have guessed it. Look, I can explain everything to you, Mr. Burton. You're a sensible man, but that lug out there, he's out to murder. Oh, help me, will you? Well, uh, that door lead to the hall? Yes. Hey! Somebody at the door! It's the hall. I beg your pardon. Did you say something? There's somebody at the door. It's nobody. Now, look, are we going to start that all over again? <laughs> See, what did I tell you? It's nobody. Oh, what are you my head quiet for? Oh, shh, don't make a sound. Now, stay there. I'm trying to avert a tragedy. W what do you mean, tragedy? Mike, he's on the warpath. If you show up, there'll be a murder. Well, let me go. What's he got to do with Mike, anyway? Well, well, maybe he doesn't want to see you make a fool of yourself. Listen, I would appreciate it very much if you and Mike could get it into your heads that I am full grown and in my right mind. You may be full grown, but anyone who doesn't realize that Anthony Guy is a phony just hasn't got any mind. Bill Anthony happens to have one of the most brilliant minds in the whole country. He'd be brilliant, all right, but he's a stinker. He's not a stinker. He's a decent, honorable man. He doesn't believe in marriage. Why, he's been pushing you around for a couple of months, and you think he's in love with you. Well, why shouldn't he be? Has he ever mentioned the word marriage? No, we just haven't got to that yet. And you never will, because he's a 100% 20-carat wolf. Why, he wouldn't marry you if you're a combination of Cleopatra and, and Helen of Troy. Oh, he wouldn't, eh? No, he wouldn't, eh? Ask him. You wouldn't happen to be jealous, would you, Mr. Burton? Huh, not me. But I know that's why you're hanging around and trying to make me jealous. Is that what you think? Yes, and if you're not careful, your little scheme will backfire. Why, you egotistical, overbearing, arrogant, c c c contemptible. Oh, 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 Susie, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, police! Uh, police, he uh, hit me! Uh, police! Good night, madam. Uh, I'm not the police! 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 Excuse me. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes. No. No, sure, I'd like to meet you. Right away? Fine, fine, I'll be there in about 10 minutes. Right. Oh, you'll have to excuse me, old man, but I got a very important message. <laughs> very important, indeed. Just make yourself right at home. Please. 
Stick Swain stammered, skin win, 12 Suzels. That's perfect. <laughs> Keep the change. Thanks, lady. Uh, I want a cigarette? Yes, sir. Uh, do you want a light? Yes, sir. Bill, there's something I want to ask you. Yes, sir. You love me? Yes, sir. Come on, darling. We're going someplace. Yes, sir. Come on, up to Daisy. Be there any minute now, lady. Oh, yeah, thank you. Bill, Bill, wake up, wake up. I want to ask you just one question. Yes, sir. Do you, do you love me enough to marry me? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Doing. Yes, sir. Oh, you poor trusting idiot. Yes, sir. Well? Uh, would you... Could, would you tell me the time? The time? It's four o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. Come on, Bill. I'm gonna take you home. Yes, sir. On the way back to New York, my head began to clear a little, and Susan told me what had taken place. My first reaction was one of relief. And frankly, later, I was sorry she hadn't taken advantage of me. 16 standard steel twin screw cruisers. Very interesting. And I want to thank you, gentlemen. And I feel with the aid of this very informative discussion, I shall be able to carry out my program with a maximum of efficiency. And I promise you, there'll be no bottlenecks. Oh, Susan and I are leaving on the midnight plane. We'll be married at my mother's home in Pasadena. Each one of you will receive an invitation, but I can hardly hope to have you with us. Well, maybe we can get together on your silver anniversary. Well, I'd better be run along. Yeah, yeah me too, Mike. I... Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, good night, gentlemen. All right. Uh, oh, oh, oh. We'll all run down together. Didn't you forget a bag? Oh, no, no, no. Bags are already at the airport. Thank you. I'm here, please. I'm sorry she isn't in. She isn't in? Where is she? Hello, Nancy. I want to see Miss Darrell. She isn't in. Who says she's not in? She does. Where's Susan? She just telephoned. She'll be here in a few minutes. Oh. oh well, where'd she phone from? From the Oak Leafs. She finally decided to go to their dinner party. Oh. Now, see here, gentlemen. Don't you think this behavior is rather strange? After all, Miss Darrell and I are engaged to be married. This place is busier than a meat market. Susan. Susan, Susan darling. Well, what is this, a family reunion? I'm afraid it was my fault, dear. You see, I asked your other... Uh, I mean, well, I was disturbed about... Uh, about them. So he invited us to dinner. To pump us about you. Well, I wanted to find out where they were wrong so that I wouldn't make the same mistake. You understand? Well, original, anyway. I'm glad you're all so palsy wellsy Are you going to be bridesmaids? Oh, Susan, honey, I've misjudged you. Won't you give me another try? Why, Mike, you're proposing. Yeah, and I'm proposing, too. Oh, not you, Bill. Oh, yes, dear. I've discovered that you're worth more than all my theories. Well, I'm doing all right. I hope you realize how much these little things mean to a woman of my age. Give them their answer quickly, Susan. We have to hurry to catch the plane. Yes. Well, Mike... Darling. No. I see. And Bill? Goodbye, Bill. Good night. 
goodbye. Mm -hmm. The answer is no to you, too, but I want you to know how flattered I am. Well, I guess I was nominated unanimously. Only there seems to be a delegate missing. From what he told us of some of your battles, you can hardly expect him to come running with his heart in his hand. No, I guess it couldn't, could I? Dear, I hate to rush you, but the plane leaves at midnight. Thank you, gentlemen, and goodbye. Bye. Yes. Yes, goodbye. What am I going to do? What am I going to do now? Well, tell him you can't marry him like you told the others. Yes, but he thinks that... Hey! What are you doing here? Sorry, but I had a hunch the living room was going to be a bit crowded. Well, what do you want? I want to talk to you. About another play, I suppose. Well, yes, I thought we could go up to Uncle Jimmy's island and rehearse like we did that very first time. And we could be married in Providence on the way up there. What makes you think I'd ever marry you again? Because you still love me. What about, about Mike and, and, and Bill and, and... And the stuffed shirt? Well, that was just a phase of your development. The trouble with you was you never kissed the mailman. What's that got to do with it? It's got a great deal to do with it. Marriage is for adults. The girl I married was only a child. An adorable child, but nevertheless a child. And I was impatient. I, I didn't work hard enough at being married. It's all my fault. I've waited a long time to hear you say that, Roger. No. What do you say? I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. Come in. Susan, you'll have to hurry. What goes on here? Everywhere I go in this house, men are crawling out of the woodwork. Come on, Susan. Richard, I think there's something you ought to know. We couldn't make a go of it. I was afraid of that, but I was hoping you wouldn't find out. Mother will be terribly disappointed. Goodbye, Richard. Goodbye, Susan. Well, that settles that. Now we've got to unpack these bags. Well, why? Well, you can't go up to Uncle Jimmy's Island dressed as though you were going to Washington. Get those blue jeans that little chuck at church used to wear. That, hmm. Well, I, I must have packed those things by mistake. I certainly had no intention of going to the island. What a woman. From now on, my life's going to be miserable. It's good to be in your arms again. Makes me wonder. Why you ever left me? No, about the mailman. <laughs>